Today we will be focusing two for the price of one. Yes, that is dual scan set mission. But we have a lot of science from the previous episode that we ultimately need to spend. And I do want to come to high power electrics because it allows me to unlock a lot of uh, Communitron 32s, which are the mainstay of my satellite relay network. I was looking on the tech tree where they are and I finally found them. So that means it will take me a while to unlock these two. Yes, spending a lot of points, I know, we are getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but that's fine. Then I want to be spending to get heavier rocketry because I intend to go interplanetary or actually we need to go first landers to the moon and Minmus and all that jazz. And to do that, rather than making some asparagus staging, I would prefer to just use bigger rockets. So from that perspective, I'm also looking into command modules because I do want to have a lot more options in terms of sending unsuspecting Kerbals to their doom. And also I'm thinking I would like to have more advanced fuel systems because it unlocks the bigger tanks like Rockcomax, Probodobadain and all others. And then we have precision propulsion that will be for the small probes, which is perfect because Big rockets launching small probes that go deep interstellar is the way to go. But since we're playing with the remote tech, we need to have strong antennas. And to be able to have strong antennas, I will for sure be unlocking some nose in the science tree. But as I said, we are getting ahead of ourselves. We do have a relay network to build. So researching some storage technology for the containers, which will be containing life support you know, stuff for my Kerbals is equally important. And in the precision engineering, we have also the DERP or HERP pod. Uh, those are actually uh, rescue pods that are mounted on orbital station. And if something was to go awry, hint, hint, well, those would be the escape pods. So yes, we are playing with lots of mods and ultimately I'm really looking forward to, I don't know if I will be able to tackle them all. However, do let me know in the comments below if you notice something interesting. I just might steer my playthrough to get something interesting. I'm really suck at aerodynamics, but I would like to unlock subsonic flight because I've been really bad with propellers, but maybe that's something I should be looking into, especially for my plane program. Then we have 45 and I figured I'd just unlock the Saturn mobile launcher. See, lots of tech on the build list, but I do want to unlock the advanced electrics or at least a little bit so that we unlock this higher tech tier nodes. Yeah, there we go. We really need how power electrics, those will be remaining, those we will be touching. However, here we have the rocket launcher. And in this episode, I have omitted the build. Sorry guys, I have actually recorded everything and my save got just corrupt, so I really couldn't bear to actually do it again. Maybe in the future episodes I will be constructing the interstellar scan sets and in those cases I will for sure be posting and launching. But this time, really sorry guys. Anyway, our rocket is ascending. Look at this beautiful volumetric clouds by Blackrack. Some of you have asked me which mod is it. This is volumetric clouds by Blackrack. It's a paid mod that is available through his Patreon page. Uh, through some small donation. I think it's like five bucks or something. I actually paid because I really wanted to support him. He is doing some awesome work with the clouds here. And ultimately, I thought you guys would enjoy watching it. So, you know, supporting your favorite actors. Well, that makes sense. Right. Okay. So there we go. We are ascending and our apoapsis is reaching 30s. Now, there is one really peculiar peculiarity with this mission, as opposed to my typical rockets, which are heavily over-engineered. This one doesn't have enough Delta V to get this thing to orbit. Yes. So we will need to detach our probes and they should be circularizing on their own. They have more than enough Delta V, but the launcher will just fall back to Kerbin and hopefully not on some poor Kerbal's hut. Because, well, he might get a little bit angry with me. It is what it is, uh, but I really like the simplistic launchers and I thought maybe, you know, Groundforks, I shouldn't be over-engineering things to the nth degree. Maybe they should be just right. 
I'm not talking seat of pants industries, but maybe at least within some reasonable boundaries. Do let me know what you think on that on the comments below. Are all massively over-engineered things still all right, or should we try to be a little bit more efficient? Your vote counts. Please, let me know. Right. Having said that, I have decided to first decouple the fairings, and this is the small probe launcher as we have, and we have two satellites, not one. And those we are gonna be decoupling, and they need to circularize 1000 meters of second delta V, and <laughs> 300 they will need to complete on their own. Yes, the launcher will not be able to support them. I'm making sure that I have extended all of the probes, you know, communitrons and stuff, and then we will be circularizing. So we are getting a little bit close to the burn, a little bit earlier than expected, because I need, I have two probes that need to finish. So, you know, and in my typical fashion, I have decided to go with having them separate. I launched them, but I figured, let's keep them together for all time's sake. So, Speaking of that, one of those probes will be going to Moon, another one will be going to Minmus, but they are exact carbon copies of each other. Right, so, we're gonna be renaming one will be set Moon scan set probe and another one Minmus. And why are we doing the scan set, you might ask? Well, we do need to survey locations where our manned mission or Kerbal mission will be landing. I'm Tending to do the, my research first, I'm thinking we should first and foremost do some good research, find the suitable landing positions, and then we're gonna be land performing the lands. So, yeah, within the confines of the next episode or two, we should be constructing a lander and going to Moon or Minmus. I'm exactly not sure which one yet. Right, alright, so we'll see. There we go, there are two probes performing the circularization burn. For your convenience, I figured I'd have them almost synchronized, so they're doing the same thing. So, you know, on the left-hand side you will see the probe going to Moon, and on the right-hand side you will see the probe going to Minmus, but they're performing exactly the same maneuvers. Do let me know what you think of this format, because I thought... If I did this one at a time, it would become a little bit boring, tedious and repetitive. This way you can actually choose which one you would want to watch. And ultimately, it's easy to keep track on both because they're mainly doing the same thing apart from some minor orbital inclinations. So here are my two probes on their Kerbel ejection burns. Yeah, one of them going to the moon the left one and the right one going to Minmus. Obviously for Minmus you need to burn a lot more, however Minmus has lower gravity, so yeah, I mean if I wanted to circularize, which I will need to, and both of them will be going to polar orbits. Namely because if I'm going for polar orbits, then I can perform scan set, can go and survey lots of areas of the land. If I was just to have them in equatorial orbit, they wouldn't be scanning and getting a lot of science because they would be just scanning the equatorial belt. In the polar region, when you're like doing the orbits, the planet or the moon underneath you rotates. So that way you get a chance to cover the entirety of the moon or the planet that you're covering. Hopefully that explains in a rather simple way. So, as you can tell, right now I'm shooting for the poles. It doesn't matter which, you know, direction it's gonna get. One of them will be going from, you know, above, another one from below. So it doesn't really matter. Both of them will be performing their burns, and both of them have been supplied with antennas that are strong enough to be able to perform this. And we have two scan set experiments. One will be radar altimetry, and that's like the big side dish that you see on the side of the probe. And another one will be multispectral analysis, which is chunked to the opposite side. Now I'm performing the maneuver node, you know, um, to circularize, and the preferred orbit or altitude would be around 70-ish kilometers. We don't need to have it exactly pointed, but I figured around 70-ish will be fine. So, here are our two probes on their journey to their destination moons. Moon and Minmus, yeah. 
I'm just trying here to find where the heck Minmus is, because it was coming from me from the side where the sun is, so I couldn't see it. Moon I was able to find, but Minmus took a little bit longer, so I decided to kick in the afterburners and get in all the more closer. So once we were actually quite close, I could tell that uh, on the map you will see from which direction is Minmus coming, and that's somewhere around here-ish. Oh, there it is. Hello, Minmus. Yeah, I mean, really, it's hard to spot. So, there we go, there are two probes. And I have actually used the flight computer to schedule the burns. This actually allows me to, even if I lose connection, I won't lose control over the probe. The only way I could lose the control over the probe is if electric charge ran out, which hopefully won't because I have plenty of solar panels and equally important amount of batteries. For the remote tech, batteries plus solar panels plus right communication dishes and the relay networks ensure that you have connectivity and therefore control over the probe. Just in case you don't, there's always the flight computer. All right, so we have inserted both of our probes in the polar orbits, respectively, and it's time to turn on the scanset devices. So high altimetry, here we go. We're gonna be positioning ourselves there we go, scan set, radar, start scan set, there we go, and start the multispectral scan, so, see, easy does it, looks good, alright, both of them will be performing scans, and hopefully, after we analyze the data, we will have the locations of how to succeed. So there we go, beautiful, we will be monitoring for sure the results of these scans, but obviously that will have need to happen in the future episodes. But guys, if you have watched it this far, that means that you must like the content I'm doing. And in doing so, I would kindly ask you to boop the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it might be a good idea because more content will be coming. So once again, thank you very much for watching. And while the probes are scanning, I will be seeing you in the future episodes. Thanks for watching. This is Groundforks signing off.